Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you a quick little micro animation that you can add to your sites to kind of spiff stuff up just a bit. And I think rather than tell you, let me show you. You can come in here and click on this publish site button and suddenly you get emojis flying across the screen. So let me show you how you can set up this confetti animation using JavaScript. All right, now I've got it saying publish site because I used this for a friend who I was building a site for. And basically uh, the site was pulling live data from Notion on build using Astro static site generator. And it was all hooked up through Netlify. And so I was using the Netlify curl command that whenever they pushed this button, it would run that curl command and publish their site for them. So I wanted to add some extra fun to it so that, you know, it was fun for them to publish their site. So whenever they update something in Notion, they can come in here and click this button and uh, get a fun experience. So I ran across this JF, uh, JS Confetti uh, NPM package, and there are lots like these. I like this one because number one, it's crazy small and it has no dependencies. And then it, uh, it works super quick out of the box and it gives you a promise in return so that you can kind of uh, do stuff with it afterwards. So there's a couple ways you can run this. I'm gonna first of all, just show you the bare basics. So we'll just grab the script tag right here and let me go ahead and I'll just put this in the head of the document. And then you can see down this way, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, grab it right here uh, now, in this case, I don't need to import it because it's already here in the script tag up top. So I'm just going to grab these two right here. And uh, let's go ahead and add a script tag. So script, and let's zoom in just a touch. I'm going to paste that in there. And then what we can do is basically call this whenever we click on the button. So the easiest way to do this is, let's let's see, let's go ahead and wrap this in a function. So we'll say uh, confetti, JS confetti. I can't call it that. Let's call it confetti fi. All right, and that works for me. And then we can come in here and then I'll paste that back in there. What we're gonna do is grab access to this button right here. So I'm gonna say uh, document.query selector and I'm just gonna select that uh, class here of build. And then I'm gonna write an event listener on here for a click. And whenever somebody clicks on this thing, let's go ahead and actually, let's go ahead and just call that directly. So I'll say confetify. All right, so all we've done is grab access to that button, added an event listener. So it should run this whenever we click it. Now you can see that we've got some additional things we can pass in here. So by default, it actually just does confetti. It doesn't do the emojis. So let me first of all, just show you kind of the bare basics. So if I come over here and I click this, we should get some bare basics and there's the normal colors. Now you can configure that just a little bit if you want to. So I can come in here and grab these confetti colors and inside of here, this needs to be inside of an object. Now I can pass it this property of confetti colors, which is just an array of whatever colors you want. Now, if I come in here and click, I've got all of those, which works just great. So that'll work for me. If I come in here, there are a couple other options. So I can change the radius. So how it kind of moves across the page. And so let me come in here and let's do that. And let's also change the number. So we'll add 500 rather than, I think it's like 250 by default, something like that. Um, and then let's leave all this for the emojis. So there's a couple other things you can do with emojis. So let's go ahead and save that. Come over here, click this. Now I get a lot more and it kind of changed the radius of the whole thing. All right, so that's uh, number one. Number two, let's, let's mix it up a bit. Let's add some emojis. So if I come over this way, you can see they've got some emoji samples here you can add in and I'll add those here. Now, so far as I can tell, you can either choose emojis or confetti colors, but you can't have both. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out. It's not gonna work anyhow because emojis take precedence. I'll save it here and let's redo the, reduce this to something like 200. And then I'll go ahead and click this. And now I get all of those emojis, whatever things I pass into this array, it's just strings with emojis in there and I can add anything I want. So let's say I came in here and I added some extra stuff like a balloon or something like that. That needs to be in quotation marks. And I came and clicked. Now balloons are involved in that as well. I can also come and I can change the size. So emoji size right here, 100. Uh, let's change that to something like, uh, I don't know, let's change it to 400. That'll be massive, but it'll it'll demonstrate it. All right, there they go. <laughs> Way too big on the screen. Uh, maybe we change it back to 40 and uh, that's more reasonable. They just kind of move across the screen. Now the size and the speed and all that is affected by the size of the viewport and it does all that for you automatically. And again, you don't have to configure any of this. It just works out of the box. Now, if you come down here, you're gonna notice that it actually passes back a promise. So it returns a promise, which is resolved whenever the confetti disappears from the screen. 
That means I can basically wait on that and then do stuff afterwards. So it's nice because you can kind of time stuff based on whenever this confetti is done. So for instance, for the build page I did, I wanted it to actually reload because I had a little Netlify button that was saying whether it had worked, if it was actually building or not, right up here. And you have to reload to see the new version of that button. So what I did is I basically clicked. When these things came off the screen, it just reloaded. So let me show you how you might do something like that. So if I come over here, you can either use a wait a sync or you can do like a dot then syntax. Let's just do a wait a sync because I think it will be a little bit easier. A sync a wait. What am I doing? Um, not a wait a sync. A sync a wait. So let's first of all make the function uh, a sync and then we'll make this a wait like that. And then just below here, basically anything I add will happen only after the confetti have completely disappeared from the screen. So maybe we come in here and we say window dot location uh, dot uh, reload. And we'll run that method. So it should reload the page after the emoji have moved off the screen. So I click, I wait, it moves all the way off the screen, promise returns, and you might have seen it reload very quickly there. We could also change this up just so it's a little bit more obvious. So we'll say document.query selector. Actually, let's say document.body.style.background color. And we'll set this to something like uh, red. All right, so after everything disappears from the screen, it should change to that. It comes like that moves off the screen. There we go. So you can see why it's helpful that it passes back a promise to you because you can use that to time uh, additional actions or styling choices. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this and refresh the page. And I'm going to now move over really briefly and show you how you might set this up in a real life project where you're not using a, a script tag. All right. So first of all, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, second of all, I guess let's leave all of that alone for now. I'm going to kill this. Uh, we don't need that anymore. And let's go ahead and set this thing up with parcel. And uh, let's see, I need this right here. Let me open the terminal and say, first of all, npm init-y. If you don't have node on your machine, you do need node to do this, but I'm assuming if you have some kind of build step, you probably already know that. Uh, next, I'm gonna come in here and actually install parcel, and that might take just a second. So let me let that finish up and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I've got parcel installed. Next, I just need to update my package.json to kind of tell it where to look and stuff. I've done some videos on parcel before if you're interested in kind of how to get that started. So let's open my package.json. I'm going to replace all of this. And basically, all it's going to say is that let's get rid of this. It's just going to look in the root directory for an index.html file and build everything off of whatever is included uh, in that document. So now let me come over here and let's kind of set this up in a more normal fashion. And I'm also going to say npm run start, and that will run my start parcel command. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up here, and then I'll shut that down. Uh, and I'm gonna grab everything in this script right here, get rid of that, and like that. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and link out to a script here, and we'll say the source is just in the root directory. We'll call it app.js, and I do want to go ahead and defer this so it loads after the body. All right, so now we need to make that. Let's see over here. I'm gonna say app.js, and then all I'm gonna do is post paste all that back in. I've gotten rid of that script tag up top. So the other thing I need to do is make sure that I actually install this uh, with NPM. So it's called JS Confetti. So let me grab this here. And that reminds me, I should probably kill this and install that first. So NPM uh, I, and then I'll do JS Confetti. So this will go ahead and load in and then I'll have access to it. And now I actually need to import it here. And to import it, I do actually need that to be a module as well, because that's the only places that you can import stuff. So I'm gonna say type uh, module and that will allow me to import things in that script. And now I should be able to come up here and go ahead and grab JS Confetti from uh, this package in my uh, node modules. So it's gonna look in here and you can see uh, in that file path that it looks inside that node modules folder and looks inside the JS Confetti that I just installed. Then I'll have access to that and then I can basically initiate an instance of that class here of JS Confetti. And now everything else should work very much the same. So let's go ahead and save this and let me restart my server here. And I'll come over here. And if we did everything correctly, there you go. So it works just the same. So uh, in case you're unfamiliar kind of how to use this in a real life scenario, I figured that might be helpful for you. Now you might be using a different kind of build tool like VJS, or maybe you have some kind of static site generator or some kind of builder. Uh, so well, however you're working though, as long as you have a script that's a module and then you install that JS confetti, you should be able to import it up top if you're using ES6 syntax and then just run it just like this. And then when you actually go to build it, so let's go ahead and do that real fast. So I'll go npm run build, which is that second script that parcel had me copy in and it does not like me. 
All right, we don't have a main script, so we should be able to just get rid of that. Let's open this back up and run this again. And now upon build, and this would work with whatever distribution thing you're using here, it puts everything in this dist folder. Uh, now everything that I need, including everything from that, uh, that confetti script should be included in one of these JavaScript files somewhere. So it included that somewhere in here. I don't know, this looks like I saw promise in here somewhere and I see colors. So that could be the one I need. All right, so that's how you would use it in a real life scenario, in this case using parcel, but whatever build tool you're using, it should work very much the same. Well, I hope that was help. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.